Good morning, church. Welcome to worship on this third Sunday of Advent, uh, the Sunday on which we light the candle of joy. Many of you got the memo that um, today was a day to wear pink to worship. Um, um, Some of you did not, and some of you got the memo and stubbornly refused to do so. So um, you are all welcome to worship here today, whether you are in the pink or not. We extend a special welcome to those of you who are worshiping with us online this morning. Thank you for choosing to start your day with us. Let us know that you can uh, see us and hear us and and where you are checking in from. I call your attention to announcements that are in our bulletin. Um, Caroling today will begin at 5 o'clock. We'll probably be gathering Um, outside if it's not raining too hard or in the narthex maybe. Um, It's going to be raining harder tomorrow evening than it is this evening, so we're going to go for it. Um, You may need a raincoat or an umbrella if if you're coming out, but uh, please join us at 5 o'clock for Christmas caroling today. Our Jazz Vesper service will be Thursday at Bowie, Um, just down the street at 7 o'clock, and that is always a special worship service. Um, Also, um, next Sunday is Christmas Eve, so at 10 o'clock in the morning, we will be having our worship service for the fourth Sunday of Advent, and then at 7 o'clock at night, we will have our Christmas Eve candlelight service, so please, please join us for those special services. We do have an extra special coffee hour this morning, so please uh, stick around after worship today and um, have lunch. It's, it's going to be that good. Um, you'll also notice in your bulletin there are uh, poinsettia order forms in there um, that you can see that they are already displayed this morning. Uh, thank you to Melissa Robinson and Alan for um, seamlessly integrating them into our display of presence up here. Um, so if you, uh, if you would like to uh, donate one of these plants to, uh, and then bring it home with you after worship on Christmas Eve, uh, fill out one of these forms and um, just put it in the plate uh, as you leave this morning. <sighs> Let us continue in our worship. Today we will hear the words of Isaiah, offering a prophetic vision that Jesus claims for his ministry. Likewise, we are called to claim the gift of being fully present to all people. Those who mourn, those who grieve, those who have suffered indignity and oppression. Mary's Magnificat is prophetic as well. She claims the overturning of injustice even before it has come to pass. In the difficulty of her situation, she sings with joy about the very real presence of God within her. Let's sing our theme song together as Adam and Cassie and the boys come forward.
we unwrap another present on this third Sunday of Advent with great anticipation for the gift that God will reveal. We, we open, open our hearts as we open the gifts. this candle of joy as a sign that we will be present with joy in the world today and always. Let us stand as we are able as we sing hymn number 138, Awake, Awake, and Greet the New Morn.
In this morning's reading from Isaiah chapter 61, the prophet declares that there is great joy when we know and do what is right. This scripture was powerful in the time when the Babylonian exile was over and the people needed the words to express their praise and thanks. And it was powerful when Jesus used these same words to refer to the heart of the purpose of his ministry. Salvation from oppression and the joy of God continue to proceed through the ages hand in hand. Let us listen for the word of God. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me because God has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to pro proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. They will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord to display his glory. They shall build up the ancient ruins. They shall raise up the former devastations. They shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exult in my God, for he hath clothed me, clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robes of righteousness as a bridegroom decks himself with a garland and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels.
that's a hard light bulb to replace. <laughs> You'll remember from last week that Mark's gospel starts with John the Baptist, right, in the wilderness. They're all grown up. So this week we turn to Luke's gospel, and we will, as we continue on through, uh, through Advent and, and Christmas tide. So we, we hear from Luke this morning, and it's the account of Mary visiting Elizabeth. And it's the context for a description of joy that resides even in the uncertainty and possible harm to Mary, a young, pregnant woman at the margins of society. She believes with her whole heart that the child in her womb is just as the angel declared, a gift from God, of God, the holiest of matter. We'll begin at verse 41 this morning, if you're following along. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leaped in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me, that the mother of my Lord comes to me? For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leaped for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken by the Lord. And Mary said, my soul magnifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on the lowly state of his servant. Surely from now on all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. Indeed, his mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm, he has scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has come to the aid of his child Israel in remembrance of his mercy according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. Here ends the reading of the lessons. May God bless our reading, hearing, and understanding of these words. Right after Mary discovers that God has turned her world upside down, she unveils this countercultural vision of a world that has been reorganized. Mary, meek and mild, not. She is that radical shouting in the streets. This is a protest song, a song of God's reversal, a world flipped upside down. It's Isaiah's vi vision of the rough places made plain. The hills and valleys reconciled. We hear this morning the Magnificat. My soul magnifies. But this wasn't Mary's first response to this good news, was it? At first, she was perplexed, and then she was afraid, and then a bit incredulous. How can this be? Remember, this was not a good situation for a poor, unmarried teenager in first century Judea. 
And she's thinking about all these things, and then she just goes off. She just goes off. We don't think about sweet Mary, the mother of God, as a radical. We don't envision her as one of those people that we see on the news. You know those people. We don't envision her standing with that group of people out in Market Square that we drive by, and they're there in the cold and the rain with signs and chants, candles. We don't think of her as one of those people telling truth, calling out injustice, speaking truth to power, challenging the status quo. But that's exactly where Mary is today. And hers is a song of protest. And she imagines this world reinvented, renewed, reformed. As we were rehearsing this morning's anthem, which it was pretty good, right? Is that all right? Yeah. Thank you. Um, if I do say so myself. <laughs> As we were rehearsing this morning's anthem, Mike said, you know, the fires are about to burn, right? What, what fires are those? And, um, you know, there were, there were a few responses. And then I said, burning down the patriarchy. which maybe is a, a bit of a theological step, but, um, but it's, it's, it's all those institutions that, um, that frankly, men have created to, um, to hold on to their power. And Mary is really turning that on its head. The proud are scattered, the lowly are lifted up, the hungry are filled with good things. And in the midst of of injustice and danger, Mary invites us to respond with joy for the great things that God is already doing. We've talked before about the built-in tension of Advent, this season of waiting. And it's not just the busyness and the stress of finding just the right presence. But it's everything else around these holy days. I looked at my calendar this week, and it's all day and into the night, every day this week, as we get ready for Christmas. I know it's that way for many of us. We ward off these short days and long nights with light. We put candles in our windows. We Replace lights where we will need them soon. <laughs> we try to fill emptiness in our lives with food or drink or work and work and work and work. And today, as we light the candle of joy, we acknowledge that for many people, for many people, this season, of all seasons, joy may be elusive, or fleeting, or if it's even there at all, it's a little bit hollow. This tension tells us on the one hand about the world we know, the world we experience, the struggles of life, illness, loss, uncertainty, seemingly intractable wars, poverty, struggling to make any progress on climate change. And on the other hand, we hear these beautiful prophetic descriptions of not just what God is going to do, Right, because these are, these are present tense. This is what God has already done. And it's hard to reconcile those two sides. 
you know, what we know and the promise of, of what will be, what we pray will be. It's tough to reconcile the, the mystery of God's transcendence, that God's otherness. And the certainty of God's imminence, of God made flesh, God to come and be with us. It's tough to, to reconcile those struggles of daily life and the realization of God's promises, but that's Advent. That's Advent. That's the already, but not yet. This week is the winter solstice, the shortest day of the year and the longest night. We'll be gathering down the street at Bowie at 2 Government Street um, at 7 o'clock for a, a Blue Christmas Jazz Vespers service, and everyone is invited to attend that as we share our grief, our loss, our wonder. This Advent for me has seemed particularly dark because the news, it seems, at every turn gets worse and worse. The tragedy of Gaza, the war in Ukraine, the humanitarian crisis in Sudan, people without homes being removed from our streets this week before Christmas, and they say it's about public safety, and maybe there is an element there. But is it also because we really don't want to be confronted with that at this time of year? Is it maybe that we'd just rather not see that and realize that we have not responded to the cries of the least of these? Advent is suited for days like these because what this season ushers in, this reality that we anticipate, this God is with us, tells us that God will come into those broken places to disturb and heal and that God will lead us into those broken places to do great things, great things. Feeding the hungry, welcoming the stranger, building communities of justice and lasting peace. Mary's song reminds us that there is something on the horizon. But she tells us that it's already here. And she tells us that in doing these great things, we will find our deepest joy. So today, may we join her song and use our voices and hands and hearts, our very presence, ourselves, to do great things and usher in the joy of the new age that God has promised. Amen. As we continue our worship and prayer, I invite you to lift up uh, joys and concerns that should be in our prayers on this day. Scott, Dana, Bob and Pam. Aunt Priscilla and family. Yes. K. 
Kevin, James, and Mark. Matt and Virgil. We've been asked to keep in prayer Marilyn this morning and Donna. Paige and her family. Many people are having their holidays interrupted with COVID, and we will hold them all in our prayers today. Carol. Lift up the joy of the sound of children in our worship. for the wonderful food that is waiting for us downstairs. <clears throat> Feel free to join if you wish to. As we have done for the last two weeks, we begin our prayers by taking time to stay fully present in this moment as we approach the holy mystery of Christmas. Too often we are afraid to allow joy to creep in, buoyed by the small, ordinary things. Indeed, how can we find joy when there is so much suffering? Being present with joy in the world is a subversive act, my friends, as we proclaim that despair is dispelled when we make a connection with another. And in that connection is connection to our God. We'll begin our prayers with three questions, each followed by a short silence Focusing intentionally on thoughts and memories can be a kind of prayer, bringing our lives into conversation with the holy. I invite you to take a deep breath and close your eyes if you're comfortable doing that as we begin. The first question is this. Who was a gift of presence to you this week? Did you experience their attention in a way that felt like a special connection? Take a moment to recall this in your mind's eye, seeing it emerge like opening a gift. The second question is this, how did you offer yourself as a gift of presence? What did it feel like to extend your attentive, attentiveness and availability beyond yourself? Did you notice how it made a difference to someone else for you to be truly present to them?
And the third question is this. Is it possible that God's presence is felt more acutely in these moments when we truly tend to one another? What could you do this coming week that would allow God's gift of joy to flow through you to someone else? It may be as simple as finding opportunities to speak an encouraging word or as complex as actually lifting up someone's circumstances through volunteering or donating. God, in this prayerful present moment, we train our attention on those who need the comfort of your healing presence. We pray this week for Marilyn and Donna, for Aunt Priscilla and family, for Dana, Bob and Pam, for Kevin, James, Mark, for Matt, Virgil, for Carol, for Paige and her family. We pray for those who are struggling with COVID and those who work tirelessly to protect themselves and those they love. We pray for ourselves. In this prayerful present moment, we train our attention now on thanksgiving and joy. We give thanks this week for the gift of children in worship, for unexpected guests, for the extravagant hospitality awaiting us downstairs. In this prayerful present moment, we ask you Jesus Christ, the greatest gift of all, to help us savor our journey toward the celebration of Christmas, help us to recognize and create moments of sweet presence rather than filling the voids with things that do not last. Help us to stop, notice what we are experiencing, and accept it with open hearts and minds. In doing this, we allow you to meet us in the right here, right now, right where we are. Hear these in our, all our prayers, Almighty God, for we lift them always in Jesus' name, who taught us when we pray to be bold and say, Our Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. 
for the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. have come again to the time in our worship when we are invited to respond with a financial offering. For those of you who are guests of ours here today, please feel no obligation to participate. Your presence here is gift enough. But for those of you who consider Second Christian your church home, we do invite you to uh, make a gift, to leave it in one of the plates on the table as you leave. But in this season of giving, when much is asked of us, I will do the same thing. There are people beyond our doors who need our help. And we have organizations in town that are ready to do that, given the resources. So I would invite you to make a gift to Footprints. They are collecting gift cards this season to um, give out to their clients or to Fairtide, who is uh, providing housing services for folks in our community and um, regionally, or to Mainspring Collective, which is sort of a joint project of theirs that is going to be doing amazing things um, for, for our community, and the, the work has already begun um, on their property on Rogers Road, and um, so um, let's spread the, the wealth and the love that we have and the joy in this place out into the world. Let us worship God with all we are and all we have. Let us dedicate our gifts. God, receive these gifts that they may be used to extend your liberating reign. With them, we offer our varied ministries in the days of head, that each of us may be part of your answer to the cries of joy in the world. Amen. Please be seated. We close our worship today with a Christmas carol, 
as a way to remember that we don't have to wait because Christ is born into our hearts every day. Hark is an old word that is an emphatic version of listen up. Charles Wesley wrote over 6,500 hymns in his lifetime. This was his way of inviting people to discover the presence of God resonating in their hearts, minds, and bodies through the music. We have recalled Isaiah's prediction that we are the heirs to cloaks of joy instead of despair, and we have heard the prophetic song of Mary. Now, along with composer Charles Wesley, we also give a thank you nod to the angels of the birth narrative for filling the skies with joyful praise at God present in the flesh with us even now. Let us stand as we are able as we sing hymn number 150, Hark the Herald Angels Sing. be seated. No matter how busy one's day is with chores or service or even religious duties, we must stop and become aware in the present moment of God right here, right now. Throughout the week, pause for just a moment to practice the presence of God, to notice so that we might be filled with joy. So go now and be truly present, so that you might be a gift of presence to others. That is all that is expected, that the gift that is you is the best gift that you can give. And in the name of the Holy Presence, the divine gift, and the spirit of joy that is just waiting for us to unwrap abundant life. Go in joy. Amen. <laughs>